Hello folks, it's Jamil Surfer for Gunstock Reviews. I'm here at the world headquarters for the rubber companies with Marty. Marty, how you doing buddy? Good, how are you? Good, good. Well, today I have an older DPMS rifle. And I will say older because it's more than a year old. And DPMS is always coming up with new rifles. This is the Oracle. The Oracle is was at that time a budget priced rifle with all the basic things you needed and just, you know, basically startup rifle. Sure. What I, I already changed the grip and the stock and the trigger guard. I put a, a Luthayar grip, a Luthayar stock, and a Troy trigger guard. What I want you to do, if you can, is to change the upper and put a floating handguard from Luthayar and a, a new gas system from Luthayar. Okay. And a and a surefire uh, muscle brake. Is that possible? Absolutely. Well. First of all, like always, make sure the uh, carbine is visually and digitally is clear. And I'm just going to hand it to Marty. You're on your own, buddy. All right, thanks. So we're going to start by just making sure the rifle is clear, right? Making sure no bullets are inside. We're going to drop the bolt and disassemble the upper, or pull the upper from the lower. And then, since we don't really need the lower anymore, we're just going to set that aside. Pull out the bolt carrier. And charging handle, and then uh, move on to our next phase to disassemble on the vise. Okay, Marty, what are you doing here now? So we're sticking this on a Geisley reaction rod. It gives us alignment with the receiver and the barrel extension. So for here, when we slip this on, the receiver is held in place, but also the barrel itself is held in place. And this gives us a good platform for stability when we're working on the barrel, and especially when we want to pull the barrel nut itself and the gas block and everything else for when we change our forehand out. Okay, we're going to remove the flash hider, right? Right, and we're just going to use this tree willow tool. <laughs> there we go. And then next step is? Next step is to disassemble. And the whole gas system pretty much comes off with it, right? Yes, the gas tube will come off with this. This one has some detents, all right. We'll drill the holes. And there we go. Gas tube with it. This will pop off. So if it's difficult, uh, you can you got to yank back real hard on on the delta ring here. Now we just used a screwdriver to try to pry this a little bit, and allowed us to get this out because we're not going to use these again. And then there's that. As I'll you see, you. I kind of pull back a little bit more, there and I'll help go. you with the bottom. There you go. And we use our our wrench here. Just get on target here. Is this the right size? And there we go. That's it. That's all we need for that. You can pull this off if you need to, just to inspect it, just to make sure everything's in line. But for the most part, inside the receiver, everything looks good. We're just gonna put this back on. Remember that the dimple will line up, or at least the alignment pin will, will line up in the receiver there. And then we're ready to uh, install. We're gonna flip this around again one more time. And now we can see at least where we're assembling our, our barrel nut. Thread's clean, we know, everything's, we know everything's intact. We're gonna install our barrel nut. I'm gonna put just a small amount of anti-seize on the threads, right? So a little bit of anti-seize in there. It doesn't need to be a huge amount, just enough to, to let us slip on. And this one, this one is unique because it gives us a clearance here, right? So we have a clearance so that some of the, uh, on say our old style here, right? On our old style uh, uh, barrel nut here, your gas tube has to align inside of these uh, inside of these little holes. So there's a timing and a torque issue here. We don't we don't have to worry about that with this because this is clear. There's no there's no alignment with this. We just have to torque this down to TDP spec, which is 30 inch pounds or excuse me 30 foot pounds. So now from here, we're going to torque this thing down, right? And we have we have two tools here. We have a torque wrench and we have a crescent wrench, right? This one's really nice because it'll install with a flattened crescent wrench, right? I don't need any real specialty tools, but the one tool I do need is a torque wrench. I need a torque wrench because 
What you do is you install the you install the barrel nut three times in order to stretch the receiver threads. So we'll run this up to, to torque spec, which is 30, 30 inch pounds. We'll go in, go till it clicks, then we'll take away our torque wrench. We will loosen, right? And we will run that process three times. And then up, click, two, one last time, right? And that allows us to significantly stretch the threads to seat per TDP the way that ARs are supposed to be installed. Now that it's correctly installed, our receiver threads will tight, they won't loosen up over time, right? It doesn't need to be a huge amount. 30, 30 foot pounds is the torque spec, but it can go all the way up to 80. There's no need if it goes in at 30, that's really only designed for the military style barrel nut right here, right? Because there is an alignment, right? When you torque these on, the initial torque will go on at 30 foot pounds. Well, these keys may not align, right? So sometimes you have to get different shims and, and whatnot in order to make sure these time correctly, but it's always best to torque on first at 30 foot pounds, and then you can climb up to the technical data package, the, the way mill spec should be built, right? Uh, up to 80 foot pounds, and that way when it's torqued down, you know that the receiver, the receiver threads are seated, they're stretched, and they're not going to uh, loosen up over time. So that's why, that, that's why we torque it three times. Okay, so now we have our gas tube and our gas block, right? We just wanna make sure that the side with the little hole, right, there it's going to be blank in the front, or at least there's not gonna be any place for the gas to escape out the front. But at the back, you'll have a hole in a hole, right? You will just simply slide in the gas tube itself, align the holes, right? And we can just put it on a bench block like so, and hold with three hands if we can. If you need my hands, let me know. <laughs> we just want to use a roll pin, especially a roll pin punch, right? If you don't use a roll pin punch, you can actually damage the pin as it's going in and it may not want to go, And right? And we're just going to use an ordinary hammer, just a six ounce hammer. And just tap it in. And it should stick out evenly, right? On both sides of the gas block, right? This gas block, you can see it's just screwed in here. We're gonna pull these screws out. We're gonna coat them in Loctite, and then we're gonna install them on the barrel. Just gonna add a little Loctite in there? A little bit of Loctite. Doesn't have to be a huge amount, just enough to coat the threads. Okay. Okay, so we've put a Loctite on these, right? We're going to slide this on our uh, barrel here. Sometimes these can be a little tight, so you just wanna make sure they fit. You're gonna just ease this thing on there. It doesn't need to be, su it doesn't need to be super out of place. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna flip the barrel over. Right, and we're gonna check. Now, there's no flat on the top of the receiver here, right? Or at least on the on the top of the of the uh, gas block here. So the only real way I have to align this is to run a level, right? So I can run a level based on the bubble here, right, on the back of the receiver, and then I'm just going to run a level on this, right, and watch my alignment. And once I get close, find my alignment. I'm just gonna tighten my screw. And now it might wanna grab and start to go one way or the other, and you're just gonna sit here nice and easy. Just lead them in. And I would just go finger tight. Do one, then the other. And then I'll just go ahead and give those a good Squeeze down, and there we go. Wipe off our excess Loctite. There you go. Thank you. So now we're just gonna move to the fore end. We're gonna Loctite with uh, some uh, blue Loctite uh, 243. It's a little softer than the red we put on the gas block, right? But uh, all we're gonna do is just put a nice even coat right on the threads, just a little bit, and that's it. And now we're going to install our fore end. This one has two alignment pieces here that are going to line up with our with our fore end, or at least with our upper receiver. So that way we don't have to worry about any sort of alignment, right? So when it goes on here, some of the some of the older fore ends they can get twisted one way or the other. It's a real eyesore, especially when you're looking down the rail. It doesn't look straight. But this one's just going to slide on, nice and easy. Don't have to force anything, and. We're just gonna sit there and make sure it bottoms out all the way at the back. So we got Loctite on our hands, right? We're just gonna install this. 
our three screws. Going to use our Brownell screwdriver to just come in and once again just run run them hand tight. I don't need to get them super tense here. Now we're starting to see the foreign tighten up a little bit, right? And as I'm starting to see the foreign tighten up, you'll notice that the taper in this right here. So these are not, not supposed to uh, touch each other. It'll, it'll start to loosen up over time, right? So we wanna run this at a nice even torque spec on all of these. I'm gonna run, the, I'm gonna run all of these with a Brownells torque wrench, or at least a, a torque driver here. I'm gonna back this off to 25 inch pounds, inch pounds, not foot pounds. And I'm actually gonna start at the front and work my way back. So I'm gonna come in and just hit it and just go till it snaps. And you see, it tensions the whole thing right there, holds it in place. I'm pretty close on the back end here, but at the front it's not holding very tight and I'm just torquing them, that's it. Okay, so it's po it is possible even with some alignment pieces, right? You might have a misalignment. If that's the case, you can just loosen them up, kind of check the tension eyeball down the top you can even run levels on this just to make sure everything is right and then retorque it it's not that big a deal just so long as it's loctite and really just you hit it the torque spec that's all okay now we're just going to install a surefire muzzle brake on this thing uh, surefire provides shims to check alignment right so if i actually throw this on here it's not going to align right or at least it, it might it might get close but uh, what surefire does is they provide a color-coded combination and really a color chart or at least a chart with which how to time this in order to make sure everything's right but it's really just a, a bunch of trial and error right and then afterwards once once you torque them on you'll uh, or at least once you know how how many shims to run you're going to use their rock set rock set is a little different than loctite loctite actually has a, a, a yield point at temperature, right? Blue Loctite's a little, its yield point's a little, uh, a little uh, lower temperature than red Loctite, like what we used on the, uh, on the uh, gas block itself. Uh, but uh, as far as, uh, as far as, uh, especially with Surefire, when guys are running, uh, when they're running their sound suppressors on there, uh, you want something that's going to take a lot of heat. Loctite will will yield with heat. Rock Set will not. Loctite, the way you defeat it in order to disassemble it, you actually heat the part up. Rock set, you can't do that. You put heat on it, it'll just keep taking it. It will not come off. So, uh, you know, if you put this on, understand that it's going to be difficult to it's going to be difficult to pull it off. But that's the reason why it goes on there because you definitely don't want this loosening up when you have a sound suppressor on. So, we'll install. Because this one actually has uh, flats on the side, you want this straight up and down. Uh, and there's also an alignment piece on the bottom. You want to make sure that is on the bottom as well. Uh, so there is definitely a top and bottom. Some some other uh, suppressors, uh, at least their adapters, they they don't mind to be they don't need to be timed. But st especially stuff with a muzzle brake itself, right? We want to make sure that we can at least get it timed. And there's our tool. And there. So we're going to add uh, rock set. Rock to set. It now. Yes. Usually it's through a bunch of trial and error that you find the right one that fits. This one just so happened to be a single red. Then you're gonna apply the rock set just all over the threads. Nice and even. And install. And this shim can kind of move up and down, so it's I'm holding it in place just to make sure that, uh, that it doesn't come out of alignment here. And then we'll just torque this thing on. There we go. So we're done? We're done. Well, 
Marty, thank you very much, man. Yeah. This looks great. Thank you for doing this for me and for us here at Gunstock Reviews. Now, next week, we're going to go to the range and Abs shoot it. Absolutely. Oh, we're going to have so much fun with this thing. We have a lot of ammo and some steel targets to kill. Should be loud. Yeah. Let's go ahead and do it, man. <laughs> thank you for everything, brother. Yeah. Stay tuned to Gunstock Reviews. We'll keep taking this uh, and upgrading this carbine to make it better every time. Thank you for watching Gunstock Reviews. Please visit our website at www.gunstockreviews.com for more exclusive content. Please visit our Patreon page at www.patreon.com slash gunstockreviews. Your contributions would be greatly appreciated and help us grow our selections and frequency of videos.